Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Israel Brief. I'm Rolene Marks. You guys meet me here every Monday to Thursday to take a look at your top stories making headlines. And as always, the Israel Brief and me are brought to you by Lay of the Land. So it's day 33 with Israel's war against Hamas or Operation Swords of Iron, as uh, it has been called in the military. Let's take a look at the top stories and the recent developments. The IDF have confirmed that 32 soldiers have fallen in defense of the state of Israel during this war against terror organization Hamas. Our thoughts, our prayers, our deepest condolences are with their families. May their memories forever be blessed. The IDF continued to operate intensively in the northern Gaza Strip. Last night it was confirmed that they are moving deeper and deeper into Gaza City and Defence Minister Yoav Gallant has said that they have surrounded the bunker where Yahya Sinwa, who is one of the most wanted Hamas uh, criminals, is hiding. We haven't had any further developments uh, as of yet. This was last night. So we will watch carefully to see what transpires. Meanwhile, the IDF chief spokesperson, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, confirmed that Israel has struck 14,000 Hamas military targets, a large majority of them being tunnels. Yesterday, the IDF also revealed footage of tunnels and rocket launchers that they had discovered. Rocket launchers were discovered inside a mosque with a long electricity cable attached. Now, just to remind you, a mosque is a holy site. This is a violation not just of international law, but uh, just of, of, of common religious morals to use a religious site like that to launch a double war crime. Double because it's launched from within the civilian infrastructure onto Israeli civilians as well. Last night, there were two massive barrages of rockets fired towards central Israel, where I live, and Tel Aviv, and I can tell you the building shook and, and there were booms all around. So uh, there does seem to be enough electricity and enough fuel to fire those rockets, despite what uh, some may be telling you. The IDF also uncovered a tunnel very close to a Ferris wheel in an amusement, in an amusement park. And, and just a reminder that these tunnels, these rocket launchers, the Hamas terrorists themselves use their civilian population as human shields. And you don't have to believe my words. They are happy to tell you that themselves. A number of Hamas officials have been speaking on television outlets in Saudi Arabia, uh, Russia Today, a number of others saying, we build our tunnels for us. The, the civilians are the problem of the United Nations and, and that we're prepared to sacrifice millions of our civilians. The latest iteration of that actually comes from the New York Times. And I do have to give credit to the New York Times. They have been very, very good at exposing the corruption and the abuse meted out to the Palestinians by Hamas. The latest is Hamas official Khalil al Haya, who has said that they're not interested in taking care of their civilians. They're not interested in bringing in fuel and water and electricity. They want to create a situation where there is a permanent war against the state of Israel and they want Arab countries to join in. So there you have it. This is out of the horse's mouth themselves. They are not interested in their civilians. Meanwhile, Israel continues to be very concerned about the situation for civilians in the Gaza Strip. Earlier today, the IDF announced that they would be uh, enlarging the humanitarian co uh, corridor, extending the humanitarian corridor by another hour. These humanitarian pauses have been taking place between 10 in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon and now will stretch on for an extra hour. The United Nations confirmed earlier today that large amounts of civilians are making their way out of the combat zone in the northern Gaza Strip towards the safe zone in the south. Now, Israel is still striking targets in the south. We're hunting Hamas terrorists wherever they may be. 
but the south is significantly much safer than the north. While we are on the subject of uh, Gaza and what could possibly happen to Gaza the day after the war is won, and we know it will be, the U.S. Secretary of State is meeting with his G7 counterparts. They are expected to call for more humanitarian pauses, but they have reiterated Israel's right to defend herself against the terror entity Hamas. No country would uh, allow for the massacre of their civilians, the hostage-taking of over 240 people, including babies, to go unanswered. Now, on the question of Prime Minister Netanyahu's controversial comments on ABC in America, where he said Israel will maintain responsibility for the security, he was quick to reiterate that he has spoken to Israeli leaders and there is no intention of reoccupying Gaza. Mark Regev, who is the spokesperson for the Prime Minister, was featured on BBC TV last night where he said, he said, listen very carefully to the words. He said, we will be responsible for the security, but no political, no other occupation of Gaza. He also said that it is hoped that Arab countries, other countries would also join in and assume responsibility. So I think we have to be very, very careful about how uh, news is consumed because we do have uh, channels out there, publications out there who are very quick to sensationalize comments. On the subject of the hostages, hostages, uh, family members are in Washington at the moment as well as the EU Parliament appealing for the international community to put more pressure on Hamas to release the hostages. We are still waiting for the International Red Cross to be allowed access to the hostages to give us some kind of report as to what condition they are in. The leaders of Thailand say that they expect their foreign nationals to be the next uh, group of hostages to be released. And we would implore the Thai government to please put pressure on Hamas not just to release their foreign nationals, but to release all of the hostages. There are uh, at least 30 children under the age of 18 who are being held hostage, including 10-month-old Kafir Bibas. Uh, he was nine months old when he was taken. He is now just 10 months old. And little Abigail, Abigail saw her parents murdered in front of her. Her siblings, thank goodness, are okay, but she is just three years old. We want the immediate release of those hostages now. President Herzog has penned a letter to the presidents of the uh, universities across the United States imploring them to do something about anti-Semitism on their campuses. You can hear the dinging now. We have a rocket attack somewhere uh, in the country. I, of course, am in my bomb shelter. So if it is here and sirens do go off here, I will still continue uh, talking to you guys. I don't like it when people interrupt our conversation. Uh, but back to the president, he, he has expressed his concerns about uh, the climate that he sees on university campuses across the United States and also has said, if you need to speak to me directly, I'm happy to engage, I'm happy to answer even the toughest questions, but this cannot go uh, uh, you know, unanswered and untended. There is a real fear for the safety of Jewish students on university campuses, including Ivy League universities like Cornell, Columbia and Harvard and Yale. Yesterday I spoke to you about South Africa calling for the withdrawal of their diplomats uh, from Israel. They've also, in recent months, uh, the foreign minister, Naledi Pandor, has also spoken to Ismail Haniyeh, one of the leaders of Hamas, without demanding uh, the immediate release of hostages. She did, however, manage to talk to him and uh, convey South Africa's solidarity. She has also met with the Ayatollah al Khamenei in Iran, and last night, in an address to the National Assembly in, in South Africa's parliament, she called for the arrest of Prime Minister Netanyahu and military top brass to stand trial at the ICC. Well, you can't make this, uh, uh, this up. 
Uh, this is the same South Africa who have uh, shielded other war criminals in the past. And of course, we'll continue to watch the situation as it unfolds there. And that brings me to the end of today's uh, top stories. And uh, just a reminder, guys, to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. All our in-depth coverage of Israel's war with Hamas is up there. Our YouTube channel is at the Israel Brief. Like, share, subscribe. You guys know what to do. We're on Facebook at Lottel Site. And we're on X at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Raleigh Marks. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you again tomorrow.